Hey, everybody. Hey. I'm going to bring up the agenda as you guys are filling it out. And I'll share that in a second here. All right, so yeah, it looks like we have uh, the previous one, so we need to do And thanks for adding that, Alvaro. Not sure if we have any other uh, agenda items aside from the triage, but let's start there, I guess. Pop that open. All right, so does anyone have a summary on CDI fails to clone file system. Let's see. Let's get to the comments. Uh, sorry, that's not the updated one. The the updated one should be now in the document. Got it. Thirty-one fifty-nine. All right. Virtual image size is larger than the reported available storage. Okay. And okay, Alex, I see that you have been involved here. And Alvaro is. We, we have a conclusion there. I mean, uh, the storage provider was just giving PVCs smaller than what was requested. And then. Uh, the author switched to a different storage provider and uh, yeah, here you go. Oh, but it's Portworks. I think he means he'll try Portworks. Yeah, it was oh, okay. Windstore. Windstore, okay. Yeah, maybe we could tag that Windstore <laughs> uh, person that used to um, contribute to CDI. It's K K Vaps, right? K Vaps, yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds good. So I guess that one. And then I guess we could keep it open for a little bit, but really it's not a CDI issue. So I guess we could close the issue and there could still be comments there. Uh, what do you guys think? Mm, I, I, I will wait for some time. Okay. To see if gave up, say something. All right, sure, that's fine. All right, and then let's go up to the next one. All right, so uh, CDI cannot import data volumes. Oh, no scratch space. Mm -hmm. 
Alexander, you've been involved here. I'm just kind of scanning here. And Alex as well. All right, so what do we have? Most of these. Okay, so let's see. Uh, so Alexander or Alex, do you want to summarize this one for us? I think so. Alex said he'd be right back. Oh, okay. All right. I'll uh, just and I think the issue with this one is just that he was using statically proficient volumes, if I remember okay. right. And he just Agreed. didn't have a scratch base, and therefore stuff wouldn't work. Okay, yeah, he had a question about the garbage collection change. Yeah. Okay, so do we think this one is resolved? I guess we can uh, check with Alex when he gets back. Um, let's go to the next one here. Support annotations on storage class to ignore during storage profile reconciliation. <clears throat> to summarize it is simply wanted to add a new annotation on the storage class uh, uh, so we want to create a storage profile at all and want uh, of course create the alert mm. So I guess the question that I have, though, is he's referring to the ODF object bucket storage classes, which I thought we already handled with this and declared them. They're basically in the list of unsupported provisioners. Yeah, but he wanted it to be open for configuration. Uh, that's what I understood. Yeah, so, that's fair. I'm just, I'm just surprised that uh, it's happening for... Um, for Rook Ceph stuff. Maybe Rook Ceph has different provisioner string than the ODF ones for the same RGW and object bucket. Cause we should like, we should, for these ones, we know them to be like, we, you know, we can do this automatically by adding them to the list. Uh, I, I don't disagree with having an annotation to override. Yep, I guess uh, it's a different provisioner. It's not mentioned here, but we can check with him. Can you mm -hmm. add a comment regarding the provisioner? Yeah, yeah. it's likely a different provisioner string. Mm -hmm. he, he mentioned the, the, the list of uh, unknown provisioners. In the oh, okay. Description. Okay. All right. It. Great. So I'll just say, could you share the exact? Okay. Sounds good. Um, Alex, let us know when you're back because we had a question about this issue here. So yeah, just okay. go back. Yeah, so we were just wondering um 
actually, what was the question I was going to ask to you now? Should we close? I think, should we close this one? Um, cause it seemed to have been resolved. Yeah. It seems to have been resolved by adding the static PV. Um, I don't know that there's actually anything else left, uh, on our team yeah. or like in this I project. To so. fix. Yeah. Okay. Once he added, uh, more PVs, it seemed to resolve. Great. Okay. Um, and then the last one, Longhorn and content type archive don't work together. Yeah, I, I don't quite understand what they're doing here, to be honest. They're doing archive content type and then trying to start a virtual machine. Mm -hmm. So I actually, I put a comment on it like five minutes ago. So. Mm -hmm. yeah we're probably not uh we're probably not applying oh they're using the pvc uh storage um api they're probably not getting file system overhead added yeah but i, I still don't understand what what they are doing because mm -hmm. If you have a content type archive, we're going to try and untar the file. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I see. Yeah, unable to create. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, maybe they're using an archive because they don't realize it could be a mistake or something. Yeah, so I asked them to do to sort of explain to me what, what they're doing because I I don't understand. I can't really help them with that because yep, our sense. archive should not work with Kubevert. That's ex explicitly why we have the Kubevert content type, right? Exactly. Yep. All right. Uh, okay. So I think that was all of the first pass on the issues. Um, I see there's a bug mentioned here. Um, who wants yeah, to take yeah, I added because I saw that we have this bug uh, reported by Nijin, and uh, um, it sounds very similar to what we saw in the issues now. Mm. All right, for port works file system volumes, the overhead appears to be higher. Yeah. So I actually spent a little bit of time looking at this uh, last week when it mm -hmm. was reported. And I'm not sure what's going on, to be honest. Uh, it looks like they're doing an ext4 file system and then exporting it with NFS. And when you request a certain size, it simply doesn't give you the size you requested. And mm -hmm. the overhead is just more than the five and a half percent that we go with by default. And I honestly don't understand how because this so, is the first time I've seen it. So, so do you do you um like I guess Portworx has this interesting optimization with uh Stork. So they have uh this idea that the the storage is yeah, it's created initially as an EXT for file system and if the workload is running on the node where the storage happens to be then um, it attaches an ext4 file system uh, pv to the workload but if the workload is scheduled on a node other than where it's located then a nfs server that's in the portworx deployment uh, can export the share and then a NFS PV is attached to the workload. So it kind of depends 
on the scheduling as to how it gets attached. Um, so yeah, it's interesting that, you know, depending on where the, where it's placed, uh, it, it could be different. Although I, I guess NFS shouldn't steal capacity, like it should be able to export the full stuff. But I think that, yeah, I think that maybe Alex, you remember that, that um, in some of your dealings with port works that maybe they have some extra reservation yeah, uh, it's mentioned on the issue here, and I also remember mm -hmm. a bug specifically about uh, their double reservation. I yep. think Portworks does have double overhead, one from uh, XT4 and the one that we enforce. So mm -hmm. um, if it's expected, I would say that we don't want to... Um, start being overly smart about this, you know, try to coordinate double overhead situations and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I wonder, yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to think of if it makes sense to have like a, a storage profile setting or something, but that can get a little bit dicey. Um, like we have, well, we have the, where is the, the file system overhead configured? Cause there, I'm trying to recall, there's a way to override that. In the CDI config. Okay. And it's a, yeah, we have a per storage class. There's like a map there, like storage class name. Yes. To overhead value. Yes. Okay. The Interesting. The, the thing is, I'm I'm really surprised that the five and a half percent default isn't large enough. Yeah, well, yeah, it's. I mean, it's it definitely seems like a a bug in in their stuff. Like if they're gonna have, if uh they're gonna have overhead, uh that's that's greater than they should probably allocate larger storage in the back end so that you can actually use it. But I don't know what we can like, you know, other than just like answering this perennial per perennially when people use port works, I don't know if there's anything that we can do as CEI to make this nicer or if anything we want to do. Um, I mean, I guess we could potentially have an alert that uh, that checks, you know, if the for the for a storage class that's port works, if there's not like a higher um, overhead set or something. I don't know. I mean, that's something we could do. We may not, it's not something we necessarily want to do, but we could potentially do that. Are they using um, the PVC uh, API? Mm, good question. So, uh, the original issue was from people just making a clone in there in the UI in, in OpenShift. And the, the clone was from a block read write once to a file system read write many. So, it was actually doing a host assisted clone and it was failing. Uh, it was running out of space. It was uh, because the source is sparse, but when we do the 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 clone, those is the clone, we get tired, and when it untars, it actually becomes not sparse. Mm -hmm. and it was running out of space, and uh, they uh, when they made this this issue is they just did it with a, a you know regular CSI clone and noticed the same issue essentially. Um, okay well the csi clone probably it looks like it worked but then they get their vm paused when they try to use it which is probably even worse than not creating the clone in the first place because if you run mm -hmm. out of space you're sort of yeah it's harder to harder to track back to the exact operation that caused the problem right Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I de I definitely think that there is a like weird behavior going on with the 
with their provisioner and it's it's only specific to theirs so um i wonder alex if you might um you know like uh make your your portworks contacts aware of this particular issue again and say like maybe even here's another instance of this problem um just so that they're aware, like maybe they can document. I, I don't know exactly, again, like then just having to use larger volume sizes, that's uh, not something that's super easy to do out of the box with like the cute with the templates and stuff like that. So I'm not sure still what the, like really the fix is that probably we should be putting the file system overhead uh, in the storage class. But the problem is, is like, unless you do that right when you install portworks um the template images are going to get imported into the pvc that's not big enough and then when we clone it's going to be this problem so yeah but i can just uh create a thread oh, and they're sparse in the in the template images so that's fine so but when the clone happens uh... that's what i'm yeah that's what i'm saying because we take the size of the of the template um, as the size of the uh, the clone, and that's not big enough. Right, but if you've increased the overhead in the meantime, then the uh, calculated size of the clone will be larger than the source. Oh, we'll do that. Okay. All yeah. Right. By the way, I think this is the storage API because of the VM name. You know that random warding. Uh, thingy mm. that's added by the UI and the UI is using a uh, storage API. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is something that, you know, we can try some further collaboration with the Portworks people. I'd hate to just kind of like do paper over the problem in CDI necessarily. I mean, we might have to, figure something out, but I know that they care about working well with Kubert, so um, they'll probably be willing to partner on it. Yeah, I always want to scream at the provisioners that when they make ext4 file systems on a, on a block volume that they reserve 5% for a root user that will never you know get used, you know, just throwing away 5% of your storage for no reason. So. Yep. Yeah, it could be argued, I think, that there's no place for this 5% reservation in Kubernetes because then you're breaking the API promise that you're giving, you know, no less than what the user requested. Right. Mm -hmm. They're kind of breaking that, but like, I understand it's like low hanging fruit for them. It's just yep. painful for us. And it's, you know, we, we accept a certain amount of overhead just because like the, the nature of file systems, but so it's a it's a gray area, I guess. Like how much overhead is reasonable, right? But it's literally just adding one argument to the uh, file system create command that mm -hmm. they're calling. <clears throat> and boom! If you know, percent extra space. And... Alexander, if you know what that argument is, would you um like? I don't know if they're actually doing that, but that would be something worth mentioning here because maybe that's the easy fix on their side. Like if that extra overhead is not intentional, it'd probably be easy to convince them to get rid of it. But if it is intentional, then that's a different problem. Like if they're actually right. using it for something. Uh, yes, I, I have to look the exact fly. I think it's dash N or dash M zero. That's it. It's, it's really. Okay. I've done it. Uh, actually, I can probably look it up in the cube so I can throw uh, a driver because I'm doing it there when I'm making mm -hmm. XT4. Yeah. And even if you put a link to yeah some existing provisioner that does it, um, I wonder which other, if there's other ones like, <clears throat> like NetApps or something like that that actually do that too. I, I think I convinced ODF to do it. So. Okay. Yeah, that would be a good, like, if there's a, <clears throat> if we have a link to show, like, here's how other provisioners do it, you might want to do that. It could just, like, make this self-convincing for them. Right. 
cool. Okay. Uh, so I think we're good on, I think we're good on this one. Um, I'll just pop back over here to see if anything else got added. I don't see anything else. Uh, so we'll do a call for items, uh, open floor items. Anybody have any other topics to bring up today? All right, uh, sounds like we've covered the agenda for the day then. So I'm gonna stop sharing and uh, thanks everyone for joining today and we'll see you at the next Vertzig storage meeting in two weeks. Thanks. Thank bye, -bye. You. bye bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.